Woo. Hi everybody, it's Chris again, and I don't know about you, but I am super excited to be out of that classroom. I think I was getting a little stir crazy. So I packed my bags and headed out to Destrehan Plantation and Living History Museum here in Destrehan, Louisiana. I'm actually standing in front of the heritage garden that the local master gardeners maintain. So I thought this would be a pretty appropriate place. We're also standing next to the compost pile, so I'll talk about that more later, and we may be show showing that in future videos. But what we're still talking about is what we're putting in the compost pile, and we need to talk about the parameters of these pieces, and particle size is important. Why is particle size important? Well, if you look at this little thing, you'll see that all reactions, decomposition included, happen on the outside. So all of these little microbes and things are basically, they have access to the outside of whatever piece of wood or vegetable you have in there, but because they, it's not chopped up into smaller pieces, they can only have access to the outside. So the more we chop that up, and you'll see the next thing, that as smaller pieces have more surface area. So the more you chop things up, you might, it's actually a converse relationship. So a, the bigger something is, the smaller amount of surface area it has, whereas small particles have larger amounts of surface area relative to their size. So basically more of that particle is on the outside than is on the inside. But you have to watch it because if particles are too small, they can compact together really tightly and then the air and water can't get in there and that, that could be a problem. Sawdust sometimes, if you get a lot of sawdust, uh, you, don't, you can't just put that in the compost directly without mixing it up. You have to spread it up and mix it in with the other things. But we'll talk about more of that when we're talking about how to build and, and stack your compost pile when you're beginning. So if you look at this chart, you'll see that the particle size matters uh, when you're dealing with decomposition in the compost pile. Basically, if you take the something, uh, if you look at the left axis, you're going to see that it goes, it covers the temperature and the bottom axis uh, covers the days to comp decomposition. If you have something that's six inches in diameter, like a, a large limb, it will get up to maybe 100 degrees, which basically it seems like probably room temperature, ambient temperature. And the decomposition just kind of continues on. It, it, it doesn't actually ever reach any kind of de uh, finished product within the 40 days that you see on the chart. If you have something that's much smaller, even as big as two inches in diameter, you'll see the temperature doesn't get up really high enough to sterilize it, but a little bit higher. It, and the decomposition process happens, but you can see that even after 30 days, it does level out and it, it seems to extend that period a long time. One inch particles, when you get inch um, particles that's my size, they do reach that 150, 60 degrees or so that needs to sterilize the, part, sterilize the soil. Uh, kill those uh, disease and weed seeds that are in there. And you'll see that the uh, after about 50 days, it looks like the particles are probably going to be completely broken down. Now, one of the things that's happening here is if you have a large six inch log and you throw it in your compost pile, those microbes are going to come in. They're going to attack the outside. They'll eat what they can on the outside, but then they can't get any further because the whole surface is very basically going to be choked up with dead microbes. So they can't even penetrate any further until other things come along. You'll get uh, slow composting with beetles and things like that that might take care of it. Even termites will get in your pile. But the, the little microorganisms in a hot pile can't do it. So this little thing, a little uh, graphic shows you, gives you a little representation of what we're talking about. If you have a cube that's one foot on every side, it's going to, be, have, it's going to have six feet of surface area. So Basically, something can happen if you add water to it. All six feet of that are going to get a little wet and it's going to roll off. If you cut that cube into one inch cubes uh, by slicing and dicing it, you'll see that it comes to one, you're going to have 1,728 cubes. And that is going to be, have a surface area of 72 square feet. So you can see a tremendous increase in surface area when you just dice these up into small cubes. So what can we do to create smaller particles? They, we uh, were in the garden. We have a few options that work pretty well. 
we have our lawnmower, we have a shovel, a nice sharp shovel, hand pruners. Uh, they actually make leaf blowers that can vacuum the leaves and shred them at the same time, which to me seems like probably the only good blower in the world because I really kind of hate blowers. <laughs> to me, it seems like all they do is move dirt around and blow it into the air. So, um, But if you're going to suck them up and vacuum them, maybe I can get behind that. And then you have um, chippers, shredders, like what the, um, lawn, uh, the tree companies use when they're out on the job. They do have uh, homeowner versions of those. Uh, please be careful if you're using one. But those can take limbs and leaves and things like that and really chop them up into small pieces. And if you're in the kitchen or in your house, a few things you can use would be like, of course, your knife, um, some scissors, a paper shredder. I like to use shredded paper in the garden. It works really well. So let's talk about some of these things. I have actually a few things from my kitchen. All right, so here's my cutting board and a pair of scissors and a chef's knife. And here's a box of stuff I brought from my house. So I've got a banana peel. I actually ate this on the way over here as a little snack. So, you know, this kind of thing, it'll break down fairly quickly. There's not going to be denying that. Most of it is water after all. But if we really want to increase this process, why not just go ahead and give it a little chop before we put it in our pile? It doesn't have to be very small pieces, but now not only is this smaller pieces with more surface area, but now we'll actually be able to spread it around and share the love of this banana inside our pile with the other, uh, with the other ingredients. Um, here's a, a box of cereal. Now, of course, your hands are also a very good um, way to get things into smaller pieces. So just go ahead and rip that up a little bit. Of course, you can take your scissors if you want, but why not just go ahead and do this? Actually, tearing it may actually be better because when you tear it, you have a lot of these jagged edges and the jagged edges have more surface area. So there you go. I've got bills and junk mail. <laughs> we already talked about this, but um, once you're done with it, if you don't need to keep it for your records, why not go ahead and give it a chop? Um, and that way, it'll be smaller. And have more surface area. There you go. And of course, all your shipping boxes, uh, you can go ahead and take this off. Now, the shipping box and the junk mail sometimes will have some plastic in it or the tape maybe. I go ahead and throw that in my pile anyway. It's easier to take out after it's done with a little um, sifter. All right, so this is kind of takes care of the household stuff. So I mentioned already that maybe a little shovel or hand pruners could be good in the garden. So here we have some, some pieces of uh, plants that they put on the compost pile here. And two things about this. First of all, when you're dealing with long stick-like things, it's important to chop them up because they, they can cause problems when you're trying to throw them in a compost pile and they don't stack right. They will create gaps and holes and, and keep the uh, particles from coming together, which, which will impede the process of breaking down. So you could take a shovel and just, you know, come along and whack these up a little bit. This, um, after you're done with your crops, this is a good thing to do with the, the plant residue that's left. Say if you're growing tomatoes, you're going to have a large plant that's coming out of the ground. Go ahead and give it a couple of whacks with your shovel or take it over to the composter and just chop it up um, with the hand shears as you put it in. So that's going to make a much better deal, much better for the compost pile. So that is one way to do it. So your lawnmower can actually be one of your best tools for your compost pile. Um, a compo the, the, the bagging lawnmower will not only chop up what it runs over, it, it will also pick it up in the convenient bag. So when it comes to leaves, I say leave the rake at home and use your bagging lawnmower. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a moment. So I want to tell you more about the lawnmower and its ability to shred and dice up your compost. 
So I've raked this area here in front of me. It's about 10 foot by 10 foot, so about 100 square feet. And I've got a pile of leaves here that's going to take up most of a bag if I was going to be bagging these up. These are very large leaves, so the large size really makes them not want to compact very well. If you have something like an oak leaf, you can see it's much smaller. Oak tree leaves do compact very well, but they do have a waxy coating. If you've ever examined one closely, it's this cute and layer that is almost water repellent. So it really helps to break these leaves up to um, get that water inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my trusty bag and mower and I want to mow up the rest of these leaves. I'm going to suck them up with the bag in this whole area and then we're going to see how it compares to this little pile here. All right, I think we did a pretty good job. So let's see how we did. So here we have our bag. Let's go over here and see what we got. All right, the big comparison. So here we have our raked leaves and here we have our shredded leaves. Now this pile It's about the same as this pile, but this pile was from an area that was three times larger. So there you go. And now these things are going to chop, shred up, and compost really well, much better than these are, much faster. So that's how your lawnmower is your good tool. <laughs>